Chapter 4, Season 2's PlayStation Cup was won by Akira. And Game 1, Akira lands at Shattered Slabs. Now, every single zone in this game, up until the moving zones, is basically max distance. And because he spent so long getting the vault that's in here, he ends up getting stuck in the congested side of the zone repeatedly. And every time he tries to rotate, he gets beamed by the players that are all around him. But that's not the only mistake he made in this game. In the partial zones, he always positioned himself on a very low layer with bad visibility. All of the players behind him will kinetic blade over his head, and he could have taken advantage of this to get the damage off of them. However, instead, he decided to kinetic blade at the same time, missing this opportunity. This means that when he lands from this rotate, he's only a little bit above the storm Stormstone's threshold, which he'll later be punished for. Since he continues this trend of getting minimal damage in the next few zones, this means that come the moving zones, he's 21 below Storm Surge and now has to be aggressive in arguably the worst time in the game to take a fight. However, he doesn't cover his angles well and gets chunked, meaning he has to use his last slurp juice. Now, he managed to survive the Storm Surge threshold, but it left him with no materials, no shields, and a player jumps into his box and 50-50s him. Now, after game one, despite almost being alive until the final moving zone, he only gained seven points since there's 25 players still alive due to the new storm changes. So on the overall leaderboard, he was down in 30th. Since he didn't deal enough damage in game number one, Akira becomes more aggressive in that second game, taking more fights around the edge in this congested zone. However, unfortunately, the storm circles are very similar to the previous game, meaning he continually has to rotate max distance and he did not adjust his rotation strategy. So this extra aggression has managed to get him 200 above the storm surge threshold. However, he's still stuck in a bad position. Since there's so many players in this area, he manages to fight one and get an easy elim, but is fought by another player deep into Storm and unfortunately focused by the entire lobby and goes down in 69th place. Nice. Because of those first two relatively poor games, he drops from 30th place down to 43rd, with still four games remaining. But of course, he does manage to win the entire tournament. So what does he change? Now in game three, he actually has some super interesting lobby manipulation strategies to get this vault. You see, in Sharon Slabs, he's contested by one other player player, Sky Jump. Guy jump pushes a player that's surrounding him outside of the POI. So naturally, this leaves Akira to just loot the POI as you would want, or so you would expect. But as soon as Sky jump gets beamed to low HP by losing this fight, Akira telepathically understands this and kinetic blades all the way across the entire POI and lands right next to him to clean up an easy Elim, or not, even though he blatantly saw him build this wall here and even if he didn't see that he would have seen him on the visual audio which I know he uses because he uploaded a video of this tournament. Well, that's odd. Must just be an odd coincidence. But when the boss spawns he puts himself inside a cone to ensure the blast radius doesn't push him back so he can quickly wipe him out. This is made quicker by the fact that Sky Jump actually starts shooting the boss with him despite seeing Akira earlier on and in no way puts any effort into shooting him instead. Despite just seeing shots from this particular direction Akira also feels very comfortable enough to just walk in the open, something that only a true lobby manipulator would do because he just knows this other player isn't going to shoot him. Then, once Akira goes to the vault, he ends up breaking the floor to harvest the loot a lot quicker, especially since it's going to break all of these gold bars leaving on the floor for you to pick up or leave a bunch behind. Interesting. As soon as he leaves, Sky Jump ends up rotating in instantly after, despite not looking at the vault one single time throughout this entire game, casually breaking his way through the walls without checking the cone or checking any of the corners, actually selecting his reality augment as he's walking inside the vault, a place which you would expect people to be camping, but clearly Sky Jump doesn't. Now, of course, what is the secret strategy here? Well, it's quite simple. Be ex duo mates and be in the same call. As you notice later on in this game, a player in his call gets particularly upset when he dies. No! No! Now, the position that he dies in this game is 27th, and if we take a look at who died in 27th in this game, oh. Sky jump. Anyway, blatant teaming off spawn aside, the positioning he puts himself in the mid game shows that he's clearly learned from his mistakes in the first two games. In the fifth and sixth zone, notice how he puts himself a little bit deeper into that zone away from the congestion on the edge, which allows him not to be focused by the entire lobby and make his seventh zone rotate very easily. Despite having better positioning throughout the mid game, he's still below the storm surge threshold in the first moving zone. But this game, he all ins the aggression and using that mythic pump that he got from the vault, he manages to pick up an easy elimination, putting him 160 to above the threshold. Since everyone in Endgame has so many materials, every refresh you get in this season is actually more impactful than the majority of other seasons. Notice that on his third elimination here, he's basically capped on materials. However, he has no shield. What this means is if he was going to use the kinetic blade to fly up into the sky, he'd be weak and vulnerable. So during the final moving zones, what he does instead is that he full tarps down below to ensure that he's protected. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not entirely sure how he ended up winning this game because usually it goes down to so many layers of heal off, but the mythic 
pump hitting max damage body shots on pretty much everyone that he saw definitely helped out. After this massive 9 Elim win that catapults him up the leaderboards, currently into third place. In game 4, he plays the majority of the game through, picking up 2 Elims as he goes. However, chokes a bit at the end. Notice how he runs out materials and jumps straight down into zone when he still has 100 HP. In this situation, he could have dropped down into the backside of zone in the storm and come behind these two players and wouldn't have been pinched in between them. This resulted in him going down in 17th despite making it to the final moving zone. Despite only gaining 13 points this game, Pablo and Queasy, who were above him in the leaderboard, gained 0 and 4 points respectively, means that after game 4, he's in first place. But game 5 is where it gets really bad for Pablo and really good for Akira. And he does this by triple katanning up to high ground, and this allows him enough time to switch back to his mythic pump and aim at some of the players down below. He only hits a 48 shot, but that console aim assist comes in strong with the SMG and he manages to pick up Pablo, giving him a cap cap capped refresh. In the final moving zone of this game, he absolutely pops off. The first Elim comes from tarping ahead of the players, and since this means all the players are behind him, he can double edit his floor, and an opponent just runs straight into it. The next Elim is super interesting because he sees a player through a wall and plays things very safe. However, when he edits behind him to continue tarping, a different player jumps straight in front of him, which he fully boxes and picks up. But that first player jumps straight into the box as well, and rather than just editing on his face, he runs around the side where he has a right-hand peek from inside the zone, and then cleans him up with a single pump. After SMG and yet another player, he has a few floppers left in his inventory, so he drops back down at the back side of the zone and picks up yet again another Elim. With another player clearly coming to grab that loot, he hides behind a tree and then yet again hits another max one pump. The one thing that's always really satisfying about controller and console players is that their movement and awareness of the objects around them is always way better than the keyboard and mouse players. At this point, he just hits a little teabag in the zone and ends up coming second. But on a little side tangent, who came first in this game was Queen. Now he was skybasing way up on high ground, and whilst up there, he actually spotted a green item down below and marked it, which you can't see in this replay. However, what it was was a med mist. So despite being all the way on top of the lobby, he spotted white heels down below, and during the heal off, he flew down with the katana, grabbed this extra heals, and actually won the game because of the extra 15 seconds this got him in zone. Despite winning this game, Akira had a 19 point lead over Queezy in the leaderboards, which meant that Akira just had to play things slow to win. In the entire tournament. In game 6, the moving zones covered the citadel, and if you notice there's a bunch of water in this area, this means that a ton of players are using the Jelly Angler reality augment to fish jellyfish, and notice that Akira finds one of these in the 10th zone and highlights it. This means that when the zone pulls back later, he knows where this is and is actually able to use this to heal 40 HP. One massive error that Akira makes is 50 15 a player who also has a Havoc. Now remember, this season these do so much damage, so it can instantly ruin your game no matter how much HP you have. Luckily, as he's using Using the med mist, he gets the siphon, which gives him that five more seconds in zone, which allows him to pop the slurp juice and get back into zone. Of course, this second place finish was enough for him to win the entire tournament, but the new zones impacted him massively. And if you want to see a full breakdown of that, I've got a video for you right here. Click it.